What's going on? It's Suk and I'm back with a brand new video on Super Duper Tech. Now in today's video, I shall be showing you the results that I got when running a number of different benchmarking tests on the brand new 2020 5K iMac. Also, we are on the road to 5,000 subscribers and if you are new around here, then I must ask you to hit the subscribe button, clicking the bell to be notified of when I upload any of my new videos. But without any further ado, let's hit the titles. The first benchmarking application that I ran was Geekbench 4. Now Geekbench gives a score for both single and multi-threaded tasks and after these have then been performed, it will then give a score based on its performance and the time taken to perform them. So the single core score that I got for Geekbench 4 was 5,259 and I got a multi-core score of 21,978. Once again, using Geekbench 4, I ran their compute test to see how well the OpenGR engine ran through Geekbench. And as you can see for this test, I got a score of 120,892. The next test that I ran was once again from Geekbench's compute lineup of tests, this time testing how well the Metal Engine ran on this iMac. Now with this particular test, I got a score of 123,783. The next test that I ran was once again from Geekbench, but this time the newest set of tests found in Geekbench 5, which very similarly tests the performance of both single and multi-threaded tasks. Now for the single core side of things, I got a score of 1,122, whereas I got a multi-core score of 5,222. And just like I had previously done, I ran the Geekbench compute test for both OpenGR and Metal and got an OpenGR score of 35,966, whereas when testing Metal, I got a score of 34,165. The next test that I ran came from GFX Bench, GFX Bench Metal. Now GFX Bench runs a number of different tests which vary from both higher and lower levels of graphical intensity. And in the interest of saving time, I have calculated the average for each of these results. But of course, I will show you each individual result. Now the score that I got for the higher intensive task was 229.36 frames per second, whereas for the lower level intensive tasks, I got a higher score of 382.45 frames per second. So considering that these are the first iMac models to come shipping with an SSD as standard, I wanted to find out what the read and write speed performance would be like. So I fired up the Blackmagic disk speed test and look at that, I got read speeds of 1492.5 megabytes per second and measly write speeds of 642.2 megabytes per second. Now yes, there were some times where I got a little more and there were some times where I definitely got less. But nevertheless, it's quite shocking that these SSDs aren't as fast as what you would initially think they would be like. Now, if you do want to see these SSDs compared to the ones in the other iMac models, albeit the most expensive ones, then of course be sure to subscribe, clicking the bell icon to be notified of when those videos go live. Because trust me, there is a massive difference between them. Next up, we have NovaBench. Now, NovaBench is a good general benchmark as it tests not only the CPU and the GPU, but it also tests the system storage and system memory. Now, with this particular test, I got a score of 2,072. And chose to perform a network speed test over Wi-Fi and got a download speed of 141 megabytes per second and an upload speed of 20.3 megabytes per second. Yeah. 
Next I ran Cinebench. Now Cinebench is a good benchmarking program as it tests each individual processing thread and then gives them a score similarly to how Geekbench gives its score based on performance and time taken to complete a task. Now with Cinebench on this particular iMac I got a score of 3016. Next I did a timed export with Final Cut Pro exporting a 5 minute 24 second video file to H.264 at both Full HD 1920x1080 and UHD 4K 3840x2160. It is also worth mentioning that with this particular test I did turn off background rendering. And as you would naturally expect that when exporting the full HD video footage, this iMac was a lot faster at doing that than exporting the 4K video file. So it took around 1 minute and 22 seconds to export the full HD video file, whereas it took 3 minutes and 20 seconds to export the video at 4K. The last series of tests that I performed came from Unigen, the first of these being their Heaven benchmarking test, which is a heavy CPU and GPU test, which will not only give a general score based on its performance, it will also give an average frame rate for when rendering out a particular scene. So for GFX Bench Heaven, I got an average FPS of 63 frames per second and a score of 1587. Once again from Unigen benchmarking tools the last test that I performed was the Valley test which performs a similar set of tests that you've seen conducted in the previous test. So for Valley I got an average FPS of 71.9 frames per second and a score of 3008. Also as a bonus for you all when running stress test Prime 95 on this machine I did not see any signs of thermal throttling which is to be expected for a desktop machine. The CPU temps were constantly above 90 degrees and I did not really hear much of the fans. I did have an average CPU clock speed of around 4.1 GHz which all things considered wasn't too bad. If you do want to see more of these kind of tests conducted on iMac models or any Macs in general then of course be sure to hit the subscribe button clicking the bell to be notified of when any of my new videos go live. Also if you've got any questions with anything you've seen in today's video or have any suggestions for future videos then be sure to leave them down below in the comment section or alternatively you can hit me up on my social media links to which can of course be found down below in the description. Once again, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Have a good one.